this violent game? Uh, yeah, I guess there's no, I don't know why I'm, uh, delaying it any further. Let's just go. He walked out in the gray light and stood and he saw for a brief moment the absolute truth of the world. The cold relentless circling of the intestate earth. Darkness implacable. The blind dogs of the sun in their running. The crushing black vacuum of the universe. And somewhere 200 animals trembling like ground foxes in their cover. Borrowed time and borrowed world and borrowed eyes with which to sorrow it. For the earth was empty of form, and void, and darkness was all over the face of the deep, and we said, look at that fucker dance. Heat Death of the Universe, a podcast about objects and concepts using words and sounds together at last. Um, let's let's capture this moment, shall we? It is uh twelve forty seven p.m. Korea Standard Time on. What is it? Saturday, September 4th, September 11th, September 11th, 3rd, 4th. <laughs> what am I saying? Um, this year's the 20th anniversary of September 11th, but we're not there yet. Um, 20 years is. ago today, I was sitting in a high school philosophy class. Actually, I wasn't. I was walking to a high school philosophy class. And I got in and got instantly in trouble when I uh, looked at the TV. Everyone was staring. I was like, cool. CNN's playing a practical joke on the world. And my teacher's like, oh, what's wrong with you? This is serious. Like, uh. And then 30 minutes later, we got sit home. So... We went to the uh, 24-hour diner to the smoking section because there were still smoking sections. And I sat there with the uh, goons I used to hang out with. So it's like two packs of cigarettes. And we speculated on things like getting drafted because we were graduating high school. So I'm showing my age here. I'm pretty fucking old. No career, no house, nothing to show for it. I blame all of it on 9-11. <laughs> the day America changed. <laughs> from a that's shitty a, that's an original idea what <laughs> that's a very original statement the day America changed <laughs> uh, now now you know what I was doing that day uh, Mr. Austin's philosophy class at my high school was actually really cool it was cool that I uh, transferred to a high school of a philosophy course I went two years at a really shitbag high school, and then I went to two years at like a really nice, well-funded city school. It was well-funded because like this is where all the all the uh, kids of doctors and engineers went. Uh, it wasn't a private school, of course, but it was like such a shocking like difference. I was like, oh wow, there's like fun classes you can take. And we definitely didn't have any any philosophy courses uh, in high school. Yeah, Although I, I was switched. I was one of the I was a type type of kid that would like carry around like a history of Western philosophy book, and like you know, probably Same. read like half of it 
if that. Anyway, it's September 11th, 3rd, 4th, I mean. Um, no, I was just thinking about how funny it would be <laughs> if the United States cha- legally renamed the month of September to just be September 11th for the whole month. One second, Josh. You're coming in, like, for the past, like, uh, ever since you gave the intro, you are super garbled. Motherfucker. Like, incredibly garbled. (laughs) Where were we? Oh, I was talking about September 11th. Uh, If the entire month of September were named, legally named September 11th, It just crossed my mind as a silly idea that could also possibly happen at some time in the future. So you'd have to be like, today is September 11th, 4th. I mean, that would be really annoying and clumsy, but stranger things have happened. Put it that way. Would we do this just to make sure no one ever forgot? That's what I'm getting at, yeah, (laughs) I guess, Mm. is... uh, just so we can say the words even more often and you see it on uh more calendars um so that's september 11th 4th 2021 year of our lord yahweh yahweh the vengeful the vengeful god stalking the desert of ancient Judea. Um, speaking of vengeful gods, segue. <laughs> There's some news recently that I feel might make other other people feel that uh, some some horrible deity is punishing. Well, at least maybe the United States. Um, What's up? Yeah, giving that some of that old Old Testament uh, lashing. Are people are people coming for the jobs? <laughs> people are coming for our jobs. Um, I mean, of course, there's uh, the never ending pestilence across the land that that needs not be named. Like basically, the Western. West Coast and quite a ways in inland is more or less on fire, which is like basically like a new summertime tradition. Just like, hey, everybody, it's time for the next record breaking forest fires. Because I'm pretty sure they're like objectively worse than last year. Um, I might have to might have to fact check that, but. And then there was like record amounts of rain and which leads of course to like flash flooding in the, uh, in the Northeast part of the country, uh, New York city got hit. Yeah. There were tornado warnings all over the East coast too. Yeah. There were like, <laughs> that was the, we- the weird thing. Like, um. I was playing Dungeons and Dragons on Thursday, and uh, one of the people I play with is in Boston, and they were having like crazy rain stuff. And one of the people I play with is in, um, oh fuck, what's that famous Canadian city on the East Coast? Vancouver. That's on the West Coast. Oh, you said East Coast. Sorry. Uh, oh, you you know their other famous city, Toronto. <laughs> Yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> no, no, yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, that's kind fuck. of in the middle, but. <laughs> No, it's not, not Toronto. Then uh, doesn't matter. New, it was also New, New Brunswick. <laughs> it was also raining terribly there, and at my friend's place in Atlanta, the other person was in Atlanta who plays in my D and D game on Thursdays. Yeah, they were all bitching about rain, and I was like, "Well, it's raining here in Seoul too, but it wasn't like windy, and I wasn't getting alerts about it." Yeah, you weren't getting like um simultaneous instructions to both seek high ground and seek low ground at the same time. Which... I know what I do when I get those instructions. <laughs> I rip my body in half. <laughs> put half of myself underground and the other half on the moon, usually. 
seems pretty safe. You'd be pretty safe from uh, the flash floods and the tornadoes in that that way. Um, yeah. yeah, there was like um, <clears throat> there was some some interesting footage of the flooding. Like uh, there, <laughs> the video I kept seeing a lot over and over was of this Grubhub delivery guy person. I don't know. Um, don't want to misgender, but, uh, they were like in like waist high water in New York. I think it was in New York city and they were just like dragging their bike through the rain, but they had like a deliver. They were still like getting deliveries out to people in the, in this insane weather. And, uh, yeah, some people just pointed out how, how fucked up it is that like just business doesn't stop for anything. <laughs> and like, there's some other footage I saw. It was like of the, uh, I think it was the comedy cellar, maybe some comedy club in New York. And it was flooded like up to people's knees and they wouldn't let every, they wouldn't let anybody out until they made sure everyone had paid like, pay, like, pay, like, uh, settled their bar tabs and stuff. And uh, so it's just like a bunch of people standing around in this, in this like rising uh, flood waters. But uh, yeah, I mean, there were some real. I mean, I read some like. I mean, people don't want to think about this shit, but I mean, like, I read about some of the people who just like died, like the worst kind of fucking death you can die die in a way, which is drowning. Um, and a, a lot of the people were poor immigrants living in like illegal basement apartments that don't have like you know uh they're not up to code or whatever it's like i don't know one family like they just had one one and one door to get in and out of and like the floodwaters were <clears throat> put so much pressure on their door that they just they couldn't open it and mm. uh yeah, I mean, it's actually pretty terrible. The whole, yeah, the whole family drowned together. It was awful. Um, we said this episode's about how everything's coming up roses, right? Yeah, <laughs> everything's been fixed. Um, <laughs> yeah, only, only, only poor immigrants are drowning in terror. So everything's mm. fine. Um. Please don't take that out of context, anyone. <clears throat> Unless you want to. <laughs> Shut up, you. Um, so, yeah, there's like biblical smiting happening in a way. I mean, obviously, you could like look around the world and look to history and and find way worse confluences of events, but... To people in the United States, it felt a little bit like everything was just closing in on all sides uh, this last couple of days. Um, and 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 we've only talked about the weather so far. <laughs> um, is, that, is there other problems in the world? Mm, I don't know. Let's see. I will say on the biblical like smiting front, um, like at this rate, like... Stay tuned next week when, uh, what? huh? Why, why does all the smiting have to be so limp? I want like lightning bolts crashing into people and shit. Well, that's what I was gonna say is like, stay tuned next for you know the next plague or whatever when, uh, all the major like bodies of water have magically transformed into human blood and when, uh, there's like a P.T. Anderson Magnolia style f frogs raining from the sky. I don't know. I was just thinking of whatever the next big variant of COVID is. Just does weird Cronenberg body horror stuff to you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sprouting new arms out of your fucking chest and your like face like stretching and elongating up to the moon. And then the only way to defeat it is to make a gun out of a like a jawbone, and you can shoot teeth at at the virus. Yeah, um, awesome. Or like you you uh, you split in two, and like you have an identical twin, 
and you're both gynecologists and something weird happens. And some young Japanese <laughs> boy becomes a uh, telekinetic god and you have to scream, Tetsuya! Adam or something along those lines. This doesn't as... sound like Cronenberg anymore. <laughs> oh, wait, I switched movies. I, I was just thinking of Akira. Um, I mean, if anyone ever directed a live-action Akira movie, I'd probably be okay with Cronenberg doing it. So I don't want that. You know, I'm going to I'm going to admit something here. I've never seen Akira. That makes me very sad. I know. I, I, like, I, I was like brace no. I was bracing myself for you to like scream at me for the first time in our friendship. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I, I think it has the best uh, movie soundtrack of all time or OST. Personally, I think you'd like it. No, I'm sure I would. I mean, it's just one of those things I never got around to for whatever it's reason. Cool. There's so much goddamn content, dude. True, it's true. Hard, it's hard to see it all. I've even tried. <laughs> and you've... <laughs> and you... You tried, would, so like you realize it's impossible, I guess. Hmm. Let's see. It's hard, even if you're multitasking. <laughs> multitasking, like um watching like eight movies at a time on your computer. Who is that guy you were you were we were gonna talk about on the self help episode that you brought up? Tim Tim Fer Ferris? Tim Ferris, yeah. He, he's guy. he's like one of those like efficiency guys right Gurus, yeah life yeah. hacker fucking bullshit Self artist. experimenter <laughs> princeton student con artist made all of his money from diet pills originally he sold high caffeine pills and labeled them as diet pills which actually taking like a thousand milligrams of caffeine will suppress your appetite so <laughs> oh what what genius mind came up with that <laughs> all on their own <laughs> Yeah, maybe I maybe you should get a, a fucking million dollar book deal for knowing that fact too. <laughs> no. I uh I repel money. <laughs> I'm so bad at, you know, making money. That's why I have a leftist podcast. You go you go to uh you go to reach for like a bill or a coin you've dropped on the ground and it just like skitters away from you. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Literally repelling. <it. laughs> um like, all I'm going to say about COVID is it's worse now than it was in, in the, the worst period peak in terms of people catching it, not in terms of deaths quite yet. And did you hear about the, the latest scary variant? Moo? Yeah, Moo, M-U. Named after a cow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, named after a cow. Speaking of cows, this ivermectin shit is is kind of blowing up um, in in the uh, culture wars like more than ever now. Ever since Joe Rogan got COVID and started promoting it in lieu of vaccines, but um, so I uh, against better judgment like read bunch of shit about ivermectin and um i mean what it was originally like being used in third world countries to some extent to like help while they wait for the vaccine like that was like its actual like use case i mean beyond like horses sorry what oh i said i i thought that it was being used in some like third world countries as like a uh stop gap until they could get the vaccine and then like crazy right-wing americans are like oh it's a cure yeah, basically. I mean, also they're just doing they're just doing anything that's like the opposite of what their political opposition was to do, which we've talked about a million times, but like wearing mask. Yeah. Um and I've they, seen so many schools recently where there something like 100 kids have caught COVID in, instantly in America. At multiple schools because they're sending them back they're not forcing kids to wear a mask or teachers to wear a mask in fact some states are outlawing the school's ability to even say they have to if i was a parent in america there's no way in hell i would send my kid to school but i have seen that uh in some some districts that parents who are refusing to send their kids to school are having issues with truancy police 
just fucked. Yeah, that's Jesus. Um, that's that's Kamala Harris's territory. She should she should start up like a national truancy uh, office. <laughs> Kamala and Biden have to make sure that everyone knows the world's better now. Jesus Christ. Um, the war's over, man. See, I was actually going to say it was heart heartening news to me that pa- a lot of parents are are actually stopping uh, are refu- refusing to send their kids to school now because they're realizing the the danger and that like kids aren't just like superhumanly like not affected by COVID even if they don't even if they're not dropping like flies and d- literally dying, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of fairly strong evidence that there's like long covid which is probably g- going to result in like cognitive uh decline um mm-hmm. just a uh, wear and tear on your internal organs and this is all I mean all kinds of long-term consequences negative consequences that you know anyway um but then, but then you you had to bring me back down to reality. You're like, yeah, they're not sending their kids to school, but truancy officers are like are fucking fining them and making it harder for them to kids stay have out to go to school. school. No, I was reading this. Uh, can't uh, long... you can't you just say I'm going to homeschool my kid? I wonder how much like paperwork that requires. A lot, probably. Um, Usually you have to be approved for it, which is why it's usually easier for, say, a religious family to do it because there's like religious organizations that like help you. With oh, the they'll paperwork. let they'll like vouch for you and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I was reading like a long Reddit post the other night of a uh, this uh, woman who didn't want to send her kid to school, and I guess the truancy officers got mad and like uh, because of fines and other things, she ended up having to send her kid to school. And her kid is like immune compromised already, Jesus. and he was wearing a mask to school, but basically none of his classmates or teachers were wearing masks, so he got COVID, and now he's like dying in the hospital. Jesus Christ! I was like, "Yep, that sucks." <sighs> and she's like, "I should have just like faced punishment and not sent him to school." I was like, "Yep." I mean, I how shouldn't be fucking going anywhere? Exactly, As I've been but saying for two years. Like, e- even even if we accept that, okay, they're going to keep schools open no matter what. People should have the option to keep their kids at home for as long as they fucking want. I mean, I know that there's some to some degree there's like a legal obligation to make sure your kid goes to school, but I don't know. Like, I feel like I remember, like, just say your kid has mono, like I. Mean- I I remember I had mono. I was out of school for like two months or something. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's fucked. Um, it is just honestly. Fucked, yeah. I get why kids normally have to go to school. I don't even know if normally they should have to. A lot of stuff I've read is that you don't really learn much from school, anyways. And this is coming from a teacher. You probably just learn it by not going to school. Um, anyway. Because all the schools really is for is to teach you how to work a bullshit job, good nine to five scheduling thing, or a shit job, <laughs> yeah, or a shit job. Um. All right, I think we should. And I know this you rarely hear me ever say this, but we should push on past the COVID discussion. And uh, but I do I do want to throw in one more thing that I I saw, um, maybe like a week ago. I just like I just wrote something on Twitter and I rarely actually like tw- tweet stuff but anyway I just had this like vision of the future uh <laughs> I was like America 2025 we've run out of greek letters to name variants after naming the strains after chemical elements from the periodic table now um and then I said something about Hillary Clinton and Trump being like uh dual presidents <laughs> together at the same time. Um, uh, yeah, they've called the ceasefire and the great ivermectin wars. Um, but the reason I m- mentioned that is uh, then I saw, I saw an article and I thought it was a joke, but apparently it's true that 
they are going to be running out of Greek letters soon for variants because mm. there are so many. Um, a lot of them just haven't been have been like less or equally bad as like the alpha, the original one. Um, Didn't they run out of like uh, letters for hurricanes last year? Oh, I, I, maybe. I'm not sure exactly. It was like the first time this happened and just all like, like they, they, disaster stuff. They went. Through, I don't remember. They went through the whole alphabet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, apparent apparently with what they are already planning on, <laughs> because they're just assuming there's going to be, you know, more mutations, which of course there will be, but uh, they're like, when we run out of Greek letters, we're going to start naming the variants after planets. And uh, I thought it was a joke. And can't wait for the MX108 variant. <laughs> and it That's wasn't my favorite planet MX108. I think planets or something, something in space. I can't remember. Anyway, um, so they're going to name them after uh, billionaires, right? This is the <laughs> this is the trademark Bezos variant. This is the Jeff variant. <laughs> Jeff variant sounds so stupid. <laughs> the Musk variant. That's the it, Musk mutation. God, that sounds so hideous. <laughs> doesn't like strike fear in your heart. It just sounds dirtier than all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess other big news this week was the the new law in Texas um, being upheld by the Supreme Court, uh, which effectively bans abortion. Um, the, basically, it's called it's called like the heartbeat rule or some shit, where the cut like you, so you technically can still get an abortion in Texas under this law, um, but not after six weeks of uh, into the pregnancy and. The uh, the trick there is that most people, like unless they're like actively trying to get pregnant and like paying like a close attention and taking tests like all the time, you know, people who are like doing fertility treatments and stuff. Mm. Otherwise, people don't really even know they're pregnant by that point. Um, and they'll they'll still be an exception for. Situations involving rape and incest. I mean, but the larger sort of, uh, I don't know, cultural conversation that was sparked by this, besides the typical, like, you know, pro or anti, you know, abortion um, arguments, uh, was every shit lib resistance, liberal, et cetera type, uh, like losing their ever loving minds, um, blaming people like Susan Sarandon for this outcome. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Uh, blaming the Green Party, blaming Ralph Nader for his, his, uh, oh, his yeah. I saw people blaming Ralph Nader. Also, I saw some of this too now that I'm thinking about it because I saw like this long post of people blaming Bernie Bros. Yeah, Bernie well, like, this was and all his your bros. Fault. Yeah, like this is fucking ridiculous. It's not our fault. And like this is something that that pops up like basically any any time things would go wrong, like because like as an extension of Trump becoming president. Haven't things been going wrong just by extension of Biden becoming president? No, because in their mind, in their mind, the reason the reason we got this. Uh, this 6-3, you know, outweighed super conservative Supreme Court is because Trump got to appoint three judges. Um, but I they mean, they don't they don't there some president that had no fucking backbone who didn't like force his Supreme Court justice through. I believe his name rhymed with blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he chose like a, a conservative and basically. he chose a conservative person too yeah um yeah and ruth bader ginsburg wouldn't step down um because she's a vain spiteful old broad in your money <laughs> um 
and so yeah, I mean, it, it's there's not it's not even really worth spending a lot of time debunking, like explaining why this is so such bullshit. And I think you know. I think our listeners are aware, but it's just so funny that Susan Sarandon was like they're almost like top target, like even more than Bernie. <laughs> they're so like bad for Susan. It's all you no. Know, she thinks it's funny though. Like she's got a good sense of humor about it. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it sucks that she's probably getting, like, annoying, like, online harassment and stuff, but um, people are probably blaming Tara Reid as well in some disgusting way, um, even though she had nothing to do with Trump getting elected. Tara, you should have consented. It's your fault that you didn't consent. Oh, man. Yeah. These people are shameless, though, man. Why'd you have to put a fucking black mark on our guy? I just can't, it's so... Susan, you should have did shittier movies. (laughs) It's so funny to me that Ralph Nader, 21 years after the fact, is still, like, these people's, like, number one. Anytime I see Ralph Nader, like, personally, like, put something on the internet where he, like, voices an opinion, if you go into the comment, comment section, you're almost guaranteed to see the first comment be... Thanks for giving us Bush, <laughs> mm. which in turn they they translate into that's how we got to Trump. But they conveniently leave out the fact that we had Obama there for eight years and then Trump. Um, but in any case, you can't even. I mean, this is this should go without saying. But so many people just plug their ears. I guess um, Ralph Nader, like without any doubt at all had nothing to do with Bush becoming elected. Bush was elected because Al Gore didn't contest anything. He just let them run over him because the Democrats are often the, the, uh, what's, what's the wrestling term? Not the heel, the opposite. I don't know. The fucking loser. They're just the losers. They're like, but it's like an orchestrated loss. Like they know they're losing, and it's somehow politically advantageous to like, you know, let basically let Bush steal the election. And you know, the whole thing came down to Florida, and the thing was, is in Florida, I think it's something like three hundred thousand Demo- registered Democrats voted for Bush that year because. Al Gore was such a shit candidate. So they only have themselves to blame. You cannot blame Ralph fucking Nader. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest, I guess. And, um, I mean, this abortion ban is obviously, like, I mean, it goes without saying this is is, is bad news. Um, This is going to lead to some really nasty shit. Like, they're basically, part of the law is they're going to incentivize people for people to like just rat each other out like you can get you'll get like financial re- reward for like turning in people to the police for get, getting um illegal abortions um it's gonna it's coming it's gonna like it's gonna create like an industry there's gonna be like yeah. you know you know there's like bounty hunters they're gonna be like fucking uh, uh, abortion and hunters or whatever um Oh, so it's going to be The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. It, well, is that what happens in The Handmaid's Tale? I've never read it. Or I've never seen the show either, but... I mean, I've, I've done both. Love the book. Also love the show. Um, It's great stuff. As far as you haven't watched it. Um, Jeez, man. We talked about this. I watched, like, the first season, and I just... I gotta get back on it later, uh, eventually. Well, you have a problem with uh, Elizabeth? <laughs> <laughs> What's her last name? <laughs> Start to <with> an end. <laughs> Elizabeth Madman. <laughs> That's it, right? I just remember the last time you brought this up, you called her Kate Moss. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. Elizabeth Kate Moss. Right. <laughs> AKM. Um, I like it. It was a good show. Great show. Um no, but uh, one of the, one of the, uh, I guess, uh, sins that you could have committed to like force you into a life of servitude as a handmaid was having an abortion on your record. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
just super conservative shit. Um, oh, that show is so good. I love depression porn. <laughs> I was on like a long walk with uh, my girlfriend Yane last night, and um, somehow got on the topic of just the future, and I. I think that she thought I was a bit insane. I was like, yeah, I don't really worry about anything since there's water wars coming up. <laughs> She's like, why do you even bother living if you feel this way? I was like, oh, it's fun. I mean, I have fun most <laughs> days. It's just I figure everything's going to hell and it's not possible for anyone to fix it in my lifetime of it all. Why is the Korean answer always to instantly go to the fucking jumping off a bridge, too, though? <laughs> well, it is a pretty uh, standard solution here. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I don't mul- know why. Like, multiple heads of state have committed suicide while why, like, in why office. Is, why is the American option just to go get fucked up? And the American option is to just go to, like, Little St. James and do fucking depraved shit and never face consequences for your actions but uh um, I what i usually do is just oh you're just talking about normal people getting yeah. depressed okay. i just like to escape into uh hobbies media games drugs alcohol not so much sex <laughs> some people like that though yeah i gotta keep up my good puritan values the so- <laughs> yeah that's why you like Handmaid's Tale. You're on the side of the fucking of the of the Purita- Puritans. Gilead for life. <laughs> um, before we move on to the next topic, I just Margaret Artwood's I awesome ha- though. You should read the book. <laughs> All right, stuff. man. We've talked about this on the podcast Do before. <laughs> Do it now. Fuck everything else. Right now, I should just read it. Just, just while start you reading the talk book, in yeah. the background. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I'll go down. No, the abortion ban sucks. It is crazy, though. I've, I've seen some of the mess on Twitter. I haven't been looking at Twitter much of, like, people blaming, like, everything but themselves. I, It kind of kills me, though, that, I mean, shouldn't this just, like... No, well, it's a Texas law, so I don't even know how much the U.S. Supreme Court has to do with it. But um, well, they have a lot to do with it. They could have okay. they could have struck it down, but they didn't. Could have struck it down, but they didn't. Right. And the the, the thing the, the the thing is is now that set precedent so that and there's at I least there's like twenty four other states that are like re- raring and raring ready to go, to go um, and it's Was almost it? certainly going to happen. Wasn't there like all this like cool talk of expanding the Supreme Court from like leftists? I think there's even a presidential candidate that was considering doing it at one point. But, um, <laughs> I mean, um, Joe Joe Biden probably even promised to pack the courts, and like, of course, they're just doing. No, nothing. he never did. He was always kind of against it. Oh, okay, well. he dodged the question a few times, but when they forced him to answer, he was always against it because he likes things. <laughs> um, what what is that great Joe Biden? Um, there's this great Joe Biden uh, quote. It's a uh, my favorite quote from Joe Biden. Um, I'm uh, not banning fracking. No, no, no. That that's a good one. It's a uh, nothing will fundamentally change. Oh yeah, that's that's his all timer right there. That's uh, and he's right. Nothing's fundamentally changed. We're still, you know, being pulled down by uh, whatever that suction's called. What it, Pull it flushes into the drain. I mean, except you could argue that some things have fundamentally changed for the worse, like this abortion law. And, uh, uh, yeah, but we're just on the same trajectory. Like, I, I think, no, nah, I, I, mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm just saying that, like, I, I'm gonna go even more negative and say it's quite likely things are getting worse. But I guess this, this would have happened under Trump, obviously, as well, this abortion law. Yeah, that's the point. Nothing has fundamentally changed. Nothing's better. Yeah. And I, you know, you got to remember who he was talking to when he, who he was getting paid to talk to when he said that. It was like, I don't remember specifically, actually, but it was bas- it was just Wall Street dicks <laughs> yeah, i think it was all the delaware credit card company people it was i think it was yeah it was like bank bankers whatever um fin- financial industry grem- gremlins i guess gremlins a bad name i'll just go back to saying ghouls um movie gremlins both of them <laughs> um but like i just thought of a way to like sort of push back on these 
idiots when they bring up like Ralph Nader being the root of everything that's wrong now. I say go back further. Go deep, deep into history. Go back to uh, when Hillary Clinton was in the Young Republicans Club in college in the 60s. Because, you know, that was the cool time to be a Republican. (laughs) And she was campaigning for Barry Goldwater. um, Just, you know, a horrible conservative politician. And, uh, yeah, blame her for this shit. (laughs) Um, did you hear that we ended a war? Well, I did, because we we already talked about it on the podcast, but, uh, it's even more ended now than, than when we talked about it, whenever that was. Um, Afghanistan, love it or leave it, is what I always say. No, I mean, there's not much to get super hung up on about this. Uh, I think it's worthwhile mentioning that... On our way out, uh, just for just for old times' sake, we droned an entire family to death um, for no reason. I mean, the reason ostensibly was, well, the Taliban killed thirteen American soldiers in some skirmish. Listen here, so, bud. So we had to bomb what just some randomly targeted house. <laughs> Listen here, bud. We. We pay a lot of money for those toys. <laughs> By God, we should use them. We're not going to use those fucking toys. Why are we paying for them? I mean, that's a good uh, segue to the to the bigger point about Afghanistan and about the military in general. That <clears throat> we're still going to spend money on the military. <laughs> we are still going to massively increase the defense budget yet again. I mean, we've increased it every year since I don't know. Is this like some money laundering game? I think so. <laughs> I think I think the entire like I'm exaggerating a little bit, but also not so much. I would argue that a lot of our like occupations such as Afghanistan were just elaborate money laundering schemes. When you look into like pallets of cash go- gone missing and all of that kind of stuff and like I've been listening to actually like <clears throat> A lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff from uh, ex military guys who uh, who you know I don't know veered veered pretty hard into into the left mm. uh, the left sphere um, and them talking about what it was like to be over there and like these are not even like the ones I've listened to they're not even necessarily like. Because I could see someone saying, like, saying, "Oh, they're just some like embittered grunt, you know, who's got PTSD." But these were like these were like higher ranking, like commanding officers, who the one the one part I mean I'll mention now. But there's a lot of interesting stuff these guys have to say is how they were just giving out millions and millions of dollars like every week to 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 just normal citizens in Afghanistan but I say it that way because it essentially like would go through those people's hands into the hands of the Taliban but yeah like we were just paying people off (laughs) and uh yeah this guy talked about like how he had just like millions of dollars like in a safe in his like in his you know bunk or whatever um anyway yeah I mean that's a that's a so fair fucked. it's a fairly complex uh thing to talk about so we'll have to kind of put that in the for later pile but uh i also yes. wanted to mention something our our man uh bronco marchetti had to say about yemen the other day um Sorry, give me a second. What do you have to say about Yemen? He said, The Saudi-backed coalition, which the U.S. still provides key logistical support to, have attacked farms, fishing boats, and water facilities, exacerbating the country's, talking about Yemen, deadly famine. Will these human rights abuses get the media's Afghanistan treatment, too? And, of course, they will not. (laughs) Um, Most people don't even know what Yemen is, I mean, let alone that we're helping to kill scores and scores of people. Um, lots of people, 
lots of people, lots of civilians. Um, anyway, I guess that was just my like, uh, the more you know, da, 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 re- a reminder of uh, Yemen is one of the many places we're still dropping Raytheon bombs on daily. Uh, so it's not like I'm just trying to say, let's please stop being so triumphant about this Afghanistan pullout. Like the drones are not going to stop. The fucking military contractors are not going to stop. Um, I'm kind of like, well, I'm taking back what I said, actually, uh, when we talked about Afghanistan before I said, oh, maybe, maybe I'm eating my own words here. Cause it seems like the private contractors are jumping ship too. But looking into it a little bit more, it seems like abs- not. absolutely not. There's going to be private private security, as they call it. Um, which yeah, is, I was surprised which means when like we were the, doing that episode. It was like the most psycho people on the planet. Like again, the the, the um, I'll just say it right now. There's a podcast called um, Eyes Left, uh, and it's it's just it's basically like talking about like military and warfare issues, I guess from a, from ex military members, and you know I guess from a a a a like quite left of center perspective. Mm. Um, they also mentioned um, how regular soldiers, when they meet like these Blackwater type guys, like they just they like scare the shit out of them. They're like re- the true fucking lunatics are these Blackwater people. Oh, I've heard that before too. <laughs> yeah, from like um, like they like killing for my fun, military man. friends. Have yeah, told me that this very thing. Yeah, um, it's like it's, those it, those fuckers are scary. It's like a like, com- it's like a common thing for yeah military members to say. It's like I mean the people who join it are usually um, the really the guys who joined because they wanted to join to kill people and then they realized oh wait once my four years is up i'll make way more money as a contractor and i actually do get to kill people and i get to really kill people like more than i did in the military which you know you don't often i mean there is technically like my understanding usually when you're like in the military you don't actually get to kill as many people as you'd think (laughs) Well, I mean, I'm sure it really depends on where you are. It does depends who, on your job, yeah, I guess. Where you are, who who's, like, overseeing you. I mean, I think there are, like, rogue elements within the active military that are probably just as psycho as the Blackwater people. But, I mean, the Blackwater thing, you know, it's, again, it's, like, the problem with privatizing like every aspect of society you privatize prisons that's no good you privatize the military it's no fucking good man every like it Mm. just never works out well um but but one more thing about uh oh wait did i say how much yeah they're gonna increase so they just they quote unquote ended the war in afghanistan and then at like almost like the same day uh, con- there's congressional approval for for next year's budget. Uh, for 25 billion additional dollars to the to the defense budget. Um, so it's like, hey, we pulled out of a war. We need more money for war. <laughs> like, so just, I mean, and I understand it's because it's like it's, there's a lot of money laundering. It's a big fucking scam in a lot of ways. Um, but. It's still just, it's like, it seems just so shameless to do it like at the same exact time. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the timing is what's, what's notable here. It's, I'm not shocked that they're, they're upping the defense budget. Uh, I mean, that's going to keep happening till the end of time or, you know, whatever. Um, but also I've got this good, uh, from our good friend Weston over at the, uh, waiting on Biden account. Um, he got two side-by-side headlines here. Um, analysis shows U S could help vaccinate the world for $25 billion, but Biden pledged just 2 billion at the G seven meeting. So that headline itself is kind of like, what the fuck? Um, but then another headline, uh, from the same, um, outlet, 
says Biden to advance Trump era sale of twenty three billion dollars in F thirty fives and armed drones to the United Arab Emirates. Wonderful. So he is just two billion shy of vaccinating the entire world with that money, and instead we're gonna just sell more weapons. <laughs> And I mean, I think this is like a thing we'll come we come back to again and again since uh I think you and I it's safe to say are pretty pretty big proponents of modern uh monetary theory. Yeah. But like so even when pointing these things out, it should also be said that okay, even if you wanted to have all of this horribly wasteful spending on like evil shit, that still doesn't justify not doing good things. Because we can, the money is theoretically there, and it's just a matter of having no uh, political will, as they call it, to do it. So, I mean, to like kind of shift gears, but you know, we anytime the Purdue Pharmaceuticals and, and the Sackler family are in the news, we got to talk about it. And uh, well, I don't know. Do you want to? Do you want to take this one? <clears throat> oh, the Purdue family. So. What's going on with the Purdue family right now? We, I mean, you know, we kind of mentioned that this was, like, going to happen when we were talking about Empire of Pain, because this is what their lawyers were fighting for. What's the headline in the, the article, by the way? <laughs> I think it's a great headline. Sacklers protected from all. Oh, the worst drug dealers in history are getting away with billions. Yeah. yeah. I was that's actually... A headline. That's That made me realize... Sorry, sorry for a quick aside here, but... um. That's on CNN.com. Like, I don't think of CNN as like, uh, I mean, I think of CNN as what it is, like a very sort of middle, very middle of the road, maybe slightly, slightly liberal of center. But this is not the first time I've seen them have like a shockingly like uh, to the point um, headline. Although I guess it's not really... uh, (laughs) It's cool. To, it's cool to 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 drag the Sacklers now, like in in, in all all uh, walks of life. I guess. Like yeah, they, they're tainted, they're, and I mean, there's probably not an American that hasn't been like affected by this somehow. Like personally. that's true. Yeah, including um, the whoever wrote the headline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is just another instance that shows that if you're rich. Like, if you're incredibly rich, that nothing bad will ever actually happen to you. The only thing the only thing bad that has happened to the Sacklers is that their father's image has been tarnished. Which no. actually might hurt them. In <laughs> yeah, some way, emo- right? in, in some, like, some piddly emotional way, I guess. But. Um, I mean, they got to move most of their money out of the United States. Uh, oh, yeah. They're uh, not going to have any more lawsuits. And what this is because the states that had taken them to trial and the federal government just agreed on the settlement that their lawyers offered. And it was like, okay, this is it. But they should have crushed them like fucking insects. That's not the world we live in. Yeah, I mean, I'm not caught off guard by this because I kind of like there's been articles saying this was coming for a bit. It's just crazy to me that that they're basically shielded from any more like legal action. Yeah, so, like, the brand's dead. the The medicine's not dead. It'll still be prescribed. It's harder to get it prescribed now, but other things will take its place. Purdue Pharmaceuticals is completely gone. But uh, does that mean? Because remember what they remember what they did like somewhere along the way. In, in the fucking uh, epic story of the Sackler family, they did like this such such cheap shitty move of like they basically like let one company called Purdue something or another die, and then just just moved everything over to another one with a slightly different name. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's basically what they're gonna do again. Probably. I mean, it does look like. Um... I mean, probably not. I mean, I would imagine they they can't continue selling opioids, but but I wouldn't be shocked if they do figure out some loophole way to do it. Honestly, it does look like Bob Ferguson, who's the Washington Attorney General, um, is going to uh, write an appeal 
and try to get the uh, results overturned. And he has like the support of nine states, but I think for it to like really like for him to get the appeal, he'd probably need the help of the U.S. Justice Department, who hasn't like made any like they haven't really taken a side. But um, actually, the book ends with these bankruptcy cases. It's the same bankruptcy judge that they talk about at the end of the book who uh, issued this like order. Um, you know, it's just and, you know, right. Oh, I was gonna say what just struck me because I was just thinking. Yeah, you know, you never hear Biden talk about the opioid crisis, or maybe he has, but I, I haven't, I haven't heard it. And uh, you know, he's so like, he's so zealous about like getting drugs off the street. Remember, I mean, that that was his bread and bu- <coughs> bread and butter for like <coughs> most of the eighties and nineties. I mean, prescription drugs are different. But um... <laughs> I know, but I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to point out the absurdity of that. That he's like he's he's been in positions of power. If he was really concerned about like, uh, but I mean, st- stopping the a- spread of like of truly deadly drugs, like he'd be writing up b- bills targeting companies like Purdue instead of writing bills that put people in jail for five years, no matter what. For like, uh, what did he say? A piece of crack that's the size no bigger than the size of a quarter. Josh, let me let me interject here. They have written bills about the opioid crisis, and it lets them put opioid users in jail for um, being addicted to something their doctor prescribed them. Um, the um, Tom from the Trillbillies, who suddenly I forgot his name, he wrote a good article about that recently. I don't remember the name of the article. Um, but yeah, like something that's not talked about a lot with the. Um, Opioid crisis is the expanded powers it gave the police, as far as like arresting people. Yeah, that's true. Not not billionaires, of course, but you know, users. Yeah, people who are suffering and actually just need help. People but, whose lives aren't worth anything, so they should just be in in prison, giving us free free uh, labor. Yeah, <sighs> those people. So that's a good note to se- <laughs> segue on. Or uh, did you, did, you, did I? Did I interrupt you before? Uh, I oh, no. I was going to say, there are some, like... So, like, the reason some people are supporting the deal is, honestly, this deal's probably the only sort of deal where states will actually get money from the Sacklers, if that makes sense, or get money from the company. If they crush them, it's very possible that states will never get anything, but they might be able to, like, completely ruin the family, which I think might be better. <laughs> Uh, on a personal note, but um, since you know MMT and we can just print our own money, but um, yeah, but there are like some people. I think like it says here, nine states or something. Uh, nine states have said they might appeal, and the Bob Ferguson, the Washington Attorney General, definitely wants to appeal it. So you know, maybe maybe it will get appealed. Who knows? I doubt it. I'm. I kind of I kind of agree with uh, Bob's quote here, which is uh, this lets the Sacklers off the hook and sends a message that billionaires operate by a different set of rules than everybody else. Obviously, I just pictured Richard Sackler just like responding to that with a, well, yeah, of course, <laughs> we earned it. That fucking asshole. Our bootstraps have jets. <laughs> well. You know who's not a fucking asshole? Are some of our listeners. <laughs> yeah. Good transition. <laughs> sure, let's go. We're going to have a, our first ever mailbag. We'll call it where... a mini, mini mailbag session. Um, where, uh, should we? Should we read these? I guess we can. I asked oh. permission. Okay, cool. I, I wouldn't just read. I wouldn't just read an email. So um, let's uh, see. Yeah. I'll I'll read the first one. You can re- read the second one, I guess if you want. Okay. Um Okay. This one is from Britain surname redacted. That's my edition. Hmm. Um Hey guys, my name is Britain. I'm an English elementary teacher with the Epic program in Busan. We should explain what the Epic program is. It's not it's not lowercase e p i c. Although that obviously no, it's, it's e p. 
It's not okay. obvious. <laughs> and although that would be cool if that's what it was, it's Everyone not. knows that EPIK stands for English Program in Korea. Duh. Yes. <laughs> Epic. It's the government program to put native English speakers into Korean public schools to assist Korean teachers with teaching English. You usually see every student at the elementary school or middle school you're placed at. Um once a week. Oh, it was cool. I did it for two years. I liked it. Um, I mean, but like many things in Korea, it kind of depends on your placement, which school you get, because the culture is going to be very different at every school. I was lucky with my schools. I did a middle school and an elementary school. Uh, I have heard some people have horror stories, I but I haven't. I liked it. I would do it again, I guess. If you, Anywho. If you didn't have a pretty, uh, pretty choice... Yeah. Uh, like my ac- current job. Ac- academy job now. Um, hey, I'm thinking about trying to get my teacher's license this year. Um, been working on the paperwork for that. Nice. Become a licensed teacher. Goes Keep on, going. On to say, this is my thing. <laughs> I mean, we're already a whole two sentences in, <laughs> sentences into this. We're getting there. Uh, this is my third year here. Your comments on desk warming really spoke to me because that's what I'm currently doing. Eight hours of podcasts a day, but I'm not complaining. That sounds great. I don't, I actually, okay, Britain, assuming you're listening, write again and explain why, how you have a full day of desk warming. You just are, you're not, not teaching remotely. All your students disappear. What's going on? Anyway, that that sounds uh, that sounds like heaven to me, man. I would love to get paid I think to, that to listen he to got unlucky. Unlucky? Yeah. So um, with the Epic program, I think you get like two weeks of vacation in the summer and two weeks in the winter. But your school actually has like four weeks, and uh, some schools actually make you come in and like, sit there during, <laughs> during the break and just sit there oh, while God. everyone else is on summer vacation. You know, as you're saying that, I'm remembering hearing stories about that. I now. never, like I said, I've always been lucky with my placements. I never had a principal who gave a fuck. They were just like, <laughs> don't "Come in, it's dumb." But, but so did that um, mean? Did that mean you got a full month off? Yeah. Oh, but, that's um, that's really good. But I I had, but I did know other people in the program who weren't so lucky. It really kind of depended on like uh, if your school's principal was like cool or not. Yeah, my principal was an interesting fellow. He used to drag me and Hyunno into his office and drink whiskey and watch soccer <laughs> during school days. Um, anywho, that sounds fun. Go uh, ahead. Continuing. Um... I love my job and living in Korea, but I recently suffered hydrocephalus from a brain tumor. Damn, man. It left me visually impaired and a little slower mentally. I'm so lucky to be in Korea when it happened because we have national health insurance here and it's super cheap compared to the U.S., Absolutely. This is something we've probably brought up on the podcast a number of times, I'm sure. Our little personal medical experiences but Hmm. i neither of us have had to deal with something as serious as yeah as here um i'm unable to watch videos or read books very well so i really appreciate you guys giving commentary on books and movies it's the next best thing i've done one bullshit job while living in georgia i was a record management specialist but i really But really, I just clicked around Excel spreadsheets all day, pretending to look busy. Uh, What what species of bullshit job would that be, would you say? I'm trying to remember. Oh, my brain just went blank. Yeah, me too. Uh, Anyway, uh, write in if you know. (laughs) Um, uh, We were building an... We were building a nuclear waste recycling facility, but it eventually got scrapped, so all the work was for nothing. It paid well, but it was so soul-crushing. I had a shit job at Chick-fil-A before I came to Korea, but it was one of my favorite jobs. That sounds like you, it's got a lot of common with you, Jason, I feel like. Mm. You said one of your favorite jobs was at a fast food place. Yeah, um, I liked it. Worked with a lot of my friends. It was fun. I got to, I got to be outside and goof around taking orders. I grew up in the South, so I appreciate Jason's Southern jokes. 
Do I make a lot of Southern jokes? Um, I mean, maybe it just means your overall sense of humor mm-hmm. and certain turns of phrase. I actually I have a lot. I actually have you, a lot of family down in Savannah. I used I used one of what you described to me as a ter- as a Southernism just today because you were like in the South, like we say in the South, I'm gonna have to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> said said that to my my friend I was talking to right before we came on here, but um we do say that. Okay, continuing here, uh, I'm a huge fan of techno and electronic music, and I used to DJ and go to a lot of parties before COVID. Ah, oh, the before times, as we call them. I went to Seoul a good bit too. Luckily, my hearing wasn't affected by the tumor, so I can still enjoy sound and music. Man, very appreciative of the little things. It kind of makes you makes you think, I gotta say. I love your outro tracks, by the way. Josh, what instruments do you play in your band? Did you make that intro track, by the way? I do a bit of production too, but it's mostly amateur stuff. Also, I liked your collab with Boomer Death Squad a lot. Their stuff reminds me of Chapo, but ra- more raw and lo-fi. You'll be happy to know that I I passed that sentiment along to to BDS, and they were they were very pleased with with it. Um, uh, if you're down in Busan, I would love to give you a tour. Hell yeah! Keep up the good, uh, keep up the great work, guys. Love the show so much. Uh, it's so nice to get a proper f- listener letter. Um, uh, to answer that question, I play the drums in my current band. Um, I'm known to play guitar and sometimes other stuff now and then. The intro track, yes, I did make, um, sort of painstakingly, um, so it kind of hurts my feelings when people say they they can't stand the sound of the beginning of it. The the, the guitar feedbacks too much. No, I think it's great. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It just uh, it was meant to be jarring. That's all I'm trying to say. It's supposed to be a a real kick in the head in the oh, in the the first beat there. Um, but cheers, Bren. That's a very nice letter. Uh, much appreciated. And, uh, I will, I've been planning a trip for, uh, Chuseok, which is just in a, uh, to non Korean based listeners. That's, uh, basically Korean Thanksgiving, but it lasts for three days. And I was thinking about coming to Busan, and the plans are still not nailed down quite yet. So it's quite possible I might be down there in like, what would that be? Two or three weeks from now? Yeah. Um, but I'm sure I'm sure we could make a trip, hang out. I, I like Busan. I've been there a number of times. Uh, the air is so much uh, cleaner. I feel like the first time I ever went to Busan, that was my first thought when I like got out of the the train station. It was like <gasps> I can breathe because I was li- I was also living in Incheon at the time, which is a uh, the air quality, I feel like, is even shittier than Seoul there sometimes. Yeah, I think so too. It's that much. It's first time I went to Busan, I lost my, uh, I lost the uh, location of the hostel I was staying at, and got in, and had that got, same problem. <laughs> got mega drunk and slept under a bridge, and oh, uh, damn. pissed off all my friends because I'd bought like a load of fireworks and started shooting it at shooting at shooting the fireworks at them which they weren't cool with (laughs) i thought it was fine they could have shot fireworks at me too but you know can you fucking do um yeah busan's cool all right we got uh got one more uh one more here from i guess this was a message to us but uh this is from jackie um surname redacted jackie said from elp 91 I got a huge ideal hearing the quote. I wanted to share it. When you try and make sense of the world, you just get depressed. That's a that's a Jasonism. <laughs> Is that one of my quotes? I you totally so. said that. 
I remember, sounds like something. Sounds like some bullshit. I would say it's I true though. Very specifically, you saying that. <laughs> I was uh, I was trying to make sense of the world last night on my walk with Yane, and I think I depressed her. Um, well, hey, before you say it's much. before you say it's bullshit, give the rest of the sentence a, okay. a go. This is an excellent observation and also a summary of my last ten years of being politically aware. Well, me too. Also. The conservative equivalent would be when you try to make sense of the world and it doesn't match your preconceptions about it, then throw away what you observed and make up your own meaning, then commit to it like a virgin on their wedding night. Never re-examine your beliefs based on new evidence. Everything has been and will be fine. If if it's not, pull harder on those bootstraps. Yeah, that that's about right for the conservatives. I They will re-examine their beliefs if one of their leaders tell them to. Like, you know, they used to believe that anthrax would cure COVID. Now they believe that horse tranquilizers cure it. It wasn't hey, anthrax, to, was it? To Bleach. Be, yeah, I was going to say, where? What is, what is this alternate universe? You're, you're so close, man. <laughs> yeah, they, it was hydrochloroquine, no, bleach first, then the hydrochloroquine, and then horse dewormer. Not tranquilizer, man. Don't get it wrong. Don't misrepresent these good folks. I definitely agree with this, though. I do think that uh, conservatives especially, but just like normies, people people hate changing their beliefs. And uh, especially if a stranger tries to change them. Um, it's also something I would say you have to like, you almost have to consciously commit to as like a as a, like an ideal, as a way of, of being and thinking in the world mm. like because we're not we're i mean i don't think we're we're wired super well to like completely like rearrange our views of the world um but i agree that this does skew you know it is almost like the definition of conservatism which is, which is like i will Keep not I, the same. I, I will not evolve yeah 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 um, so um Jackie goes on to say, "Ers is depressing, like our, uh, you know, worldview. But at least it's not repressing. I do like that. Yeah, me too. I agree with that too. Hope you are both staying safe with this Delta bullshit, Jackie. Then Jackie goes on to say some this stuff is, about this is a new, uh, separate, separate message. Like not, yeah, not attached to the what we just read. First off, Jackie, I want to say." You, you people actually listen to the commentaries. I always question that. Um, <laughs> goes on to say, What the fuck is a root shell? It's possible I asked this or you asked this. I know what a root shell is. I, I've used Linux on most of my computers for, for a long time. Okay, most people don't know what it is. So just keep uh, reading first. <laughs> so it's a question you all asked in Fast and Furious. I wonder which one. I Does think it was, I think it was the F9. Cause... Okay, because I don't. Remember, I mean, there is a computer hacker guy in the first one. He's the one who dies because he was like my favorite character because he dies. Oh, there, um, well, there was hacking in the first one. But well, it wasn't hacking. He was like uh, programming the NOS systems on the car or whatever. Um, yeah, but the one with like okay. Charlie's Theron, where she's yeah. like the genius hacker. I'm guessing that's the one. But anyway, neither of us remember asking this question. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> it, it's very possible though. I was also. I think during well, no, all I don't these think, commentaries, I don't think incredibly they're incredibly drunk. I don't think they're making it up. I'm just okay. saying we don't. We both don't remember. <laughs> this this is an actual thing in Linux. This ter this is the term for a terminal or command prompt on Windows. It's a shell. I mean, I guess you don't have to read all yeah. of the uh, the the technical ex explanation, but I guess you can. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've 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 had to make bash scripts for when I was doing some. Um, it certifications because i used to do it stuff um but yeah bash is basically just like a way to uh make little scripts that run within the command prompt um which is what you're saying here and this is only half the phrase root is also like it's like the administrative privilege it lets you do anything on the system um and um for example install an application requires root on linux so the complete phase basically means i have a terminal window with permissions on the target computer Windows users call root administrator privileges basically the same, basically the same ideal. Although a different system, Technobabble and movies are generally bad. 
this case, they actually used hacker words to the point where a server engineer, me, thought, nope, that checks out. It's cool. You're a server engineer. No, I don't know. I, I don't remember us jabbering on about it, but it's possible. I do remember complaining about some hacking scene. Um, though I might have, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if I did say it, just, just, uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm just remembering that. <laughs> I mean, look, I was I was not paying attention well at all either. Uh, you know, the whole thing where I was like psyched about the magnet plane, and then I it happened, and I didn't even <laughs> register it in my mind, <laughs> even though my eyes were like on the television, it just like wasn't going into my brain. But uh, that whole like most of the movie, Charlize Theron, the hacker genius. She's hacking something, but from, like, a sort of futuristic, like, Hannibal Lecter-esque, like, prison cell. Yeah. But the whole time, like, a large part of it, you thought that she was working with the people there and that that, that was just her office. <laughs> I did. I mean, I think that um, I can never go back and listen to this commentary, Jackie, to confirm that we asked this question because I watched the movie and commentated on it once and I didn't even want to watch the movie, but I'm glad you listened to the commentary. And, um, yeah, we're always, uh, I mean, I'll speak for myself at least. I'm always a little anxious when I've released the commentaries because Jason and I just like really let our, our mouths run. Yeah. I feel like I've said some really ridiculous stuff, especially, <laughs> Especially the later on into a series we get. Oh yeah, I remember some triads. I think I, I think I often try to start fights with bigger podcasts. <laughs> the yeah, when we were finishing the Jurassic Park franchise, the last like thirty minutes were just us like talking shit about Virgil, Texas, and stuff. And that was pre- that was before that, that was pre yeah pre a drama. So maybe mm. we were. Maybe we were like those uh, precogs in a uh, minority report. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. All right. Well, Britain, Jackie, thank you for uh, for <laughs> for listening for, for listening yeah. to our desperate begging for 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 letters. We much appreciate it. This is fun for us to do. We hope it's fun for people to listen to and fun enough to wear. You guys write in again, or other people write in. That would be great. It'd be awesome to do a mailbag episode where we just ask and listen to questions all day. Yeah, I'd love to do a full episode of just like uh, we could do like a fucking like advice column mm. <laughs> or advice whatever uh, yeah. podcast <laughs> or you know whatever. Um, anyway, that's cool. This is also you know what it, you know what I realized what it is. This this lets us go out on like uh just like a like we end so many episodes with it's like totally down in the fucking dumps, yeah. <laughs> and this feels like we're going out on like a high note, you know. Um, so I say recommendations and get out of here. Yeah, sure. Uh, what what am I recommending? Um, I can go first if you want. I'm ready. Uh, sure. Go ahead. I'm kind of ready to. But okay. yeah, you go ahead. All right. Um, I'm going to recommend a movie called Taxi Driver. Now you might say, but Josh, didn't you just recommend that I watch Taxi Driver and combine it with Bringing Out the Dead as a double feature? And I would say, yes, you are correct. But I'm talking about a Korean movie from 2017 called Taxi Driver. Um, I just watched it last night for the first time. I thought it was really excellent. It's based on a, on a true story. Um, it's largely about these, um, pro democracy protests that were going on around South Korea in the earth. This was in 1980 is when the movie takes place when Korea was still under, like, maybe the most brutal military dictatorship it's been under. I think yeah, it was awful. arguably worse than even under their first long-term dictator. But, I don't mean, that's apples and oranges, probably. But, um, uh, so, one of the most 
like famous uh, tra- tragedies that happened based on like these college kids just you know peacefully protesting uh, that they just wanted like democratic elections. You know, they weren't even asking for much. That's like. You know, that makes me feel kind of spoiled by comparison, like thinking about it. But um, like they would have probably even been fine with like sham democratic elections, like the kind we have in the U.S. Anyway, um, the tragedy was that the military went into this town and this was a town, uh, Jason, you lived in for your first like, what, two years in Korea? Gwangju? Gwangju, yeah. City. And, and uh it's a city my my bad it's a a booming metropolis <laughs> it's like a million people maybe um anyway the military rolled in and just i mean they just killed like tons and tons of students just out like just shot them to death like like it was guerrilla warfare but there was it was all one sided i mean it was just executing people um in the streets and uh, there was a similar um, massacre in Jeju Island as well that I think was actually even, you know, if we're just talking about numbers, I think even worse. Um, which reminds me, I'll say this now just to kind of keep it in mind, but uh, I think we'll probably do an episode about both those things and go into more detail um, one of these days. That'd be cool. But um, yeah, strong recommend on the movie. Um, let's see, everybody's seen Parasite. So the uh, the driver dad in Parasite is the same actor who's the uh, taxi driver in this movie. Taxi driver, um, great actor. Um, the thing that happened that I didn't know was that it involved this German reporter who went went down to cover these uh protests which like nobody knew about um that's the other thing is they like completely like cut off the city from the rest of the country like nobody in seoul or anywhere knew what was happening like they blocked all the roads they cut all the phone lines so it was amazing that this this german reporter and this korean taxi driver you know i guess spoiler alert (laughs) they got in and safely got out um, with uh, like film evidence of the massacre. And that's basically the only reason the rest of the world saw what was going on there. Um, anyway, I feel like I went on way too long about that, but it's a very good movie, very interesting, sad part of history. Take it away, Jason. So my recommendation, which I just had, but I'm embarrassed to recommend it suddenly, but I'll do it anyways. I uh, I was bored last night. Uh, me and Yane wanted to watch something, so we decided to watch all the uh, new uh, Marvel What If TV show, where they take like different scenarios, like what if Captain America had not been created, or uh, what if the Avenger had died, etc. I guess sort of like a Twilight Zone of like Marvel situations. I enjoyed it. Is it it's like pretty good? Is it like animated or something? It's animated, but they have like uh Tom Hiddleston and Jeremy Renner and stuff doing all the voice acting. Okay. Um the animation's cool. Uh yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I almost hate to recommend a Marvel shit, but um, you know. So I watched last night. I enjoyed it. Um Yeah. So I guess that's a recommendation. I don't think you should support Disney though, so do like me and pirate that shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I uh, recommend that part of your recommendation. <laughs> Steal things from giant companies. They don't um, care. A quick teaser for the next episode, which is going to be coming down the pike very soon, because um, we're trying to get back on our regular kind of schedule. Um, we're going to record on Labor Day, and uh, it'll be like. A themed episode, I guess. I'll put it that way. Mm. So you'll have that to look forward to. Um, okay, we're at heatdeathpod.com. We're on Twitter at heatdeathpod. You can email us at the very long email, heatdeathoftheuniversepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, like I said, we enjoy 
interaction with the uh, people who actually listen, the people who go deep and listen to our film commentaries, um, or just people who listen to like one episode and said, meh, we'll, we'll hear, we'll hear from all of you. Mm. Um, and on that note, on that note, continue gazing at your navel <laughs> until you listen to us again. Yeah, don't do, don't do anything else. All right, we're a, we're a jealous podcast. <laughs> all right, until next time. Yes, see you. See ya. The first voice recording was made in 1860. It was a 10-second fragment of the French folk song Au Claire de la Lune recorded by inventor Edward Leon Scott de Martinville. But who will make the final voice recording and when? What will it be? Who will hear it? <laughs>